So I just want to start off by making sure that when I leave here today, you guys got everything you came for. So what I'd like to do is just start by, by just asking the question, you know, what would make today a success for you? And that's different for anyone. Um, there can be stuff about leverage that I'm going to cover. I'm going to be open book. I'll talk about where I screwed up. I'll talk about where I've done well. I'll share anything. So if you guys have any questions at all about that stuff, um, let me know. I've had a lot of times people get to the front of the room and they say, oh, just do this. And like, they seem like their business is easy and like they have everything figured out. And the reality is business feels a lot like running into a wall sometimes. And just and you do it repeatedly and then you find the door and you, and you keep going until you hit the next wall. So um, I think you guys are running into challenges or something like that. Well, I guess I've hit that wall once and I can share with you how I got around it. So okay, feel free to tell you exactly where I failed. Like I said, if you're until you, I had it all figured out all the time. So. <laughs> Uh, knowing that, what would make today a success for you guys? What is it you guys want to learn in the other today's session? First, do you have a team? Yeah, I do. Probably. Actually, you get structure. Um, so, last year did over 400 ends, a couple hundred million dollars in sales as me, an admin, and two admins that work. So, me, an operations person, two admins that work under them. Okay. In the last four months, I've added two buyer's agents to start with the showing system, and I've got a uh, buyer's agent and a showing system slash buyer's agent. What the role is is determined basically by what role they take in the transaction. If they're just covering up showings for me, they're showing system. Um, but if they're taking people out and negotiating the deal, they they get the buyer the buyer deal. Do you pay for the showing system? Absolutely, time? absolutely. Yeah, so the way I have it set up is I have it set up so up to ten showings, it's a flat rate. Past that, I'm going to be twenty five percent of the commission. And the reason I structured it that way was. You know, I just sent someone to look at a $2 million home, and it was a 10 o'clock phone call, they'd be there for 11.30. And my gut feeling was 12500 for that showing seemed like a little bit much. Right. So I wanted a number that where they felt good and I felt good. And so I basically said, look, I'll send you a people because I'm still going to be actively working with clients. Right. Um, and right. if you exceed a certain amount of showings with that, that, with that, client. With that client, then we'll get you there. And so for me, the number was 10. And I don't get them to eight or nine and then stop doing them showing. So if they're going to creep into the tens, I'm good. They so you, so they book a six hour day and squeeze in 10 in those six hours, their commission? 25%. Okay. okay. Um, no, I only ask because of different people at different stages and I'm not where you are in terms of administration and operations and everything else. But in terms of where I'd like to be, I'm curious about what systems you had implemented to get you to the point where you're bringing in a bit and bringing in secondary support, and so I'm trying so to. I'll, I'll give you my full story then, because I think it will it will fit for, for someone like you. Um, I hired my first admin about three weeks into the business, and I, I was in a bold course, and I was lead generating, lead generating, lead generating. Hi James, how are you? Good, job. good. Sorry, I'm late. You know, to push up the burpees for later. No problem. <laughs> I didn't have those this morning though. Me too. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Um, when did you uh, hire your first admin? Three weeks into the business. So three weeks, three weeks in. So I left PepsiCo. My story goes out like this. I was taking Bold and I was taking one day a week off of work and going into uh, Bold on my vacation day okay. and doing Bold. So I would drive into work making phone calls. I'd come down for a 15 minute break in the morning. I'd make phone calls. I'd take my lunch in my car. I'd make phone calls. I'd take a break in the afternoon. I'd make phone calls. I'd drive home. I'd make phone calls. You're seeing a theme here, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then on the weekend, I would either open house or phone call and get to my 100 contacts. And by the time I think we hit week three, I hit my 100 contacts week one, 100 contacts week two. Week three, I got like 96 or 98 out of 100. And I'm thinking, I've got a full time job. Half the people in this class are crying like every time they're in here. I think like, the first bold course was hard. Like it was like the Kate Patelski, and I say this with all love in the world. That woman is like a bad, bad woman. Like she, <laughs> she just did not take it from anybody, and yeah. she could she could dish it out. And she said, "Who didn't hit their contacts?" So I was honest to put up my hand, like 96, 98, and I was like, "Damn, I'm like." Shh. I did pretty good. All you guys can't get it done, and I'm working a full time job for a Fortune 60 company. Like, Shh, come on. Um, but she came over and she said, why didn't you get it done? And I said, just that. I said, look, I've got a full-time job like, at a company where I'm working, you know, 50 to 60 hours a week. I still got to 96 or 98 for foundation on the world. So, and she said, it doesn't matter. You didn't do it. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be that kind of conversation. Just in your head instantly. And she said, what are you going to do about it? And she like sticks a microphone in my face. 
And I said, I'm going to quit my job. And I didn't mean to say that. It just kind of flew out of my mouth. You're trying to catch the words and shove them back in. And it was out, it was out in front of a room. Of the first bowl, I think, was much bigger. It was about 200 people. And uh, I went in the next day. And I gave my notice at the uh, Pepsi Co. Very next day. Very next day. I know I said I did. Maybe maybe it was two days later, but I was like, yeah, oh, that oh, week. Oh. Yeah, you know, like it was it was very very comfortable. Yeah. Um, my daughter was due three weeks later, my first child, so I'm quitting six figure job. Three weeks before my kids hit, you know. So thank God I had a very loving and supporting wife at the yeah. time and said, if you think you can do it, go for it. Um, and I did. And you know, my big motivation at that time was to start a family. Yeah. Like it was, and I just went head down, and it didn't matter what they said to do on that bold list of everything you had to do every day. Without exception, I hit everything. There's stuff I hated, but I got it done. Yeah. The stuff I liked, I got that done too. Um, but I just, I did that, and I didn't stop doing that until about October. And the reason I know it was October, because that's when I finally lifted my head and looked up, because Outfront Magazine called me. I didn't even know what Outfront Magazine was. I was just like brand new to the company. Yeah. They said, we want to do a story on you. And I thought of my friends like playing a joke on me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did anyone have a, like, a bad day where you're kind of rude, a little bit short? Oh, yeah. no. That was me. Like, and I was just, I was, I was like, what do you want to do a story on me? I was not pissed off, but like not, not the friendliest of them. Yeah. And I think they could just tell I was going to say, let's take a look at your numbers and give us a call back. I'm like, what numbers are you talking about? sales numbers. So my OP had called down to them letting them know about me. Yeah. She knew more about what I had done than I had done. Because I was like, don't start your family, don't start your family, don't start your family. Like, that was my whole thing. Yeah, so family clearly wasn't starving. No, well they were, no, they were doing just fine. I did 44 deals in my first six months. Um, but it was just... Go, 44 go. deals in your first six months? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it wasn't until I looked up at that Thanksgiving, like, oh my God, I'm on the stage. And, like, to that point, I was still faking it. I was just, go, 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 yeah. go. No, it turns out I was, I was actually legit at that point. That was cool. Um, but three weeks into that, I was go, go, go. My OP said, you got to hire someone. I went, well, you need to hire someone. I just quit a job. Like, the, the commission checks hadn't started coming in yet. Like, I'd closed deals, but nothing. the paid. money hasn't shown up. Yeah. Um, and, and I hired someone, just part-time assistant, 20 hours a week. And she would come in and clean up my trades and, and do that, do those little tasks so that I could just be out. You know, she booked showings for me. The day I got leverage, I was out with a client, and I had like three clients light up my phone, my Blackberry at the time, it was Blackberry. Mm -hmm. and they said, we want to see this at, you know, five to, between five and six, or five and six thirty, you want to go see these homes between seven and nine tonight, I went, how am I going to get back, book all that, and I, oh, forwarded it off to Shannon, book these, please, and she would literally print out all the MS sheets for me, for the client, she'd write the lockbox code in the top corner of my sheets, mm -hmm. and I walked into the office, I dropped a file, I picked up two files, and went right back up the phone. This is cool. Like yeah. all I'm doing is making money here. Like this is this is way better than, and that's when leverage actually clicked for me. So it wasn't you handing off to your assistant things that you weren't great at or didn't want to do. It was you using your assistant to make your day easier, as opposed to. I, I wish I, I could say that. Yes, that's exactly how I thought about yeah. it. I gave my assistant what I couldn't possibly do because I was just stretched too thin. Okay. See, I think what a lot of people do is they hire assistant, they go, oh, I can relax a little bit like that. They yeah. their feet off the gas and they say, oh, I'm just gonna sit here while they do that. And wrong approach. Like, your assistant's there so you can go hard in the areas that matter, not in the areas that don't matter. And all areas matter. But if you do a deal yesterday, that trade record's not done until next Tuesday. Does it really matter? Probably not. Probably not. You're not closing in a week. Yeah. Like unless it's like a crazy fast closing, then that stuff can get done. But you come back and you start filling in all the trade paperwork. Yeah. You know, I used to do it at night, thinking great time, but you're just taking time away from family at that point. So we're gonna touch on a lot of this stuff today. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's how I got into it. And then last year, I guess 2015, I was number one agent in Canada for unit volume, um, number five in the world. And then last year was my biggest year ever. We cracked over 400. And you're only at five still. Well, I was at three. Yeah. No, I had two assistants at Danis. There was four of us that did over 400 units last year. I was in my own production. So it's, um, it works if you, if you figure out how yeah, Because there's, there's, there's people leverage and there's, there's technological leverage. There's a lot of things that you can do with technology to make life easier. And it's just, I do follow up boss my database. I'll switch over to this new one when they release the team version of it. Like, 
this new Kelly Diary Sam coming is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, but I'm also Google back ended. So, like, my contacts weren't going. When I put it in my database, it wouldn't flow. So, if a phone number would ring, I don't know. Does anyone here have a thing where they just don't pick up numbers they don't recognize? I do now, but I didn't always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get better at it. But, um, but so, yeah, so, so then it would flow through, and I could make my notes when a client called things like this. Just it's a bunch of little little dumb things. It's funny. Before I came up here, I've got a an offer presentation tonight. So I, I literally, you know, my admin sent me the geo warehouse, so I can check my Google description on everything tonight. And the offer tracker, everyone's registered an offer, their cell phone numbers like leverage is happening right now. Let me know with you guys. It's the only way I'd be able to do offers tonight. If, yeah. If I didn't have that, I'd be calling everyone right now instead. They're calling everyone right now, letting them know they have everything emails going out to everyone to show the property, letting the offers are tonight and where and how they're going to submit and the format and stuff like that. Like everything that you do, you should do anything you're going to do multiple times in your career besides like showing property negotiating, like writing an email or, or getting ready for multiple offers, you should do it one more time. And that's it. Because if you do it one more time and you write the system out and you document it and you train someone on it, you're done. It's over. You never touch it again. And then that way, you can set yourself up to spend all your time and make your money as opposed to shuffling paper. Cool. Yeah. That's basically where we get, I guess, bigger into the numbers things today. Um, so that's a little bit about my, my background. Um, is there, so the people who just came in, one of the questions I asked is, what do you want to take out of here today so that you got everything that you came here for? What, what types of things do you want to come? Um, you know, I'm just curious to hear about how you built it. Um, 
And right now I'm sitting at about a level four myself. One of the biggest things I think people are challenged with when they see this is they say, okay, that's, that's the goal, that's where you get to. Maybe. That's a fine goal if you're happy there. You might decide, I'm good being an agent, I want to do 12 deals a year, I want to do 20 deals a year, I can do it on my own. That's what you want to do. Awesome. Like, don't say, I have to get to level seven. You just have to kind of look inside and, and, and know what you want to do, feel that out. You might start saying, I want to get here, and you might settle in somewhere here. You might say, I want to go here, but then realize, I'm good at this, or I like it, and, and keep going. That's OK, too. Just, there's no right and there's no wrong here. And so that's the one thing I just everyone needs to take away from this slide in particular, is, is you go where you want to go and where you're most comfortable. Okay. Um, does, everyone, does everyone familiar with levels? Mm -hmm. So deciding what work to keep, this is the first thing that you really need to understand when you're applying leverage or when you're getting someone to work with you. The work you keep is not the work you like. The work you keep is the work that makes the money. Um, anything that makes money is the last thing you do for someone else because typically they're not going to do it as well as you. Typically. It's not always the case, but typically. If someone doesn't fill out a trade record as well as you or as quick as you, do you care? No. Not at all. Not at all. Um, you know, if someone's inputting stuff into the database more slowly than you, do you care? No. The reality is, are probably going to be slower than you in a lot of things, um, unless you found like the perfect person. Then they're going to start off slowly, and then they're going to be way better than you in a lot of this stuff. And that's that's the aha I'm going for now. I've heard it. But now I've got you know, my two buyers agents, the way they're working with clients where I work in open houses and things like that, they're just far better at it than I thought. They're just, you know, they have bright, shiny, happy, smiling faces. I have a serious look, it looks like I'm gonna kill you when I'm thinking, but it's just, it's just my thinking face. Um, okay, so to determine what we're keep, the one thing you need to do is start by take, keeping a, a bit of a journal. You need to look down your typical one or two weeks and you just catalog every single thing that you're doing. And understand that keeping a journal about this unto itself is a whole other task that you're going to mess up from time to time because you're going to forget about it. But it's really, really important to understand what you should be doing. If you want to take things to the next level, um, I think it is Darren Hardy, the real estate trainer. Yeah. Okay. So he wears a stop, so he wore a stop watch around his neck in the early going because you can't forget one of those big, like, flavor plated kind of stop watch around your neck. <laughs> he pressed go when he was doing something that was dollar productive, but like to be generating or, or talking to clients or doing showing or something like that, and press off when he wasn't. What he found is he was doing about a half hour of dollar productive work every day. So we're in the office for eight or more, and a half hour of this spent doing something that's going to make money. You kind of want to get that number up, right? If we could spend seven or eight doing stuff that makes us money and nothing else, I'd think about how much more we make. There would be 16 times more than we could if we were just doing it for the half hour a day. So then, when you look at the journal and you look at how much time you're spending doing things, you need to ask yourself, what's happening that, that, sorry, what's not happening that should be? For a lot of people, it, it'll be lead generation. Mm -hmm. And it's that thing, you say it, people go, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one likes it, it's okay, no one likes it. It's just, you have to be a little sick in the head, but you like the outcome, you like what happens when you do deals, you just hate the act of picking up the phone and dialing because it's, it's a bit of a pain. Um, and then we determine our hourly rate. So when you're deciding when to hire or when that time is right, you look at your gross commission income, you divide it by 50 weeks a year, and then divide that 50 weeks a year out of, let's say, a 40 hour work week. So it's GCI divided by 50, take that answer again, divided by 40, that's your hourly rate. And the truth is, we all work more than 40. A lot of times. Um, but it's just, it's a nice standard because your man's only going to work 40, or you, they're not going to put in 60 to 80 hour weeks. They're going to work a lot less. So you really just want to be able to compare dollars to all, dollars to dollars. You know, what do I make and what do they make? Or what would it have been if I were to hire them? Okay. So we determine our weekly work hours. We'll just say 40. And then we figure what we're going to need someone, what we're going to need to pay someone to do the work that's not making us money. So if you go and hire an assistant locally, you're probably going to look anywhere from the minimum wage is what fifteen now. Mm -hmm. So that so that's like thirty a year, I think thirty two five, and then so forty years twenty bucks an hour. So you're probably on the low end going to pay someone locally forty thousand dollars a year ish, unless you can start paying someone hourly to come in and do maybe twenty hours or ten hour week packets while you school up. But to find some great 
that's going to help you go to that, that next level, you're probably going to have to hire someone on more full time, make that commitment to them, and then just figure it out with all the work that you've given away, taking extra time that you have, and be getting more. Like, truly, if they just help you do, like, I guess three deals, three deals yeah. at 12,500 commissions for 37 five. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's basically $40,000. They just need to be able to free up to do one more deal a quarter, and you're in the month. Now, really, they should free up to do an extra deal a month. But, but a deal a quarter is all you need in order to, to at least break even. Okay? Now, that's on the traditional side. There's the virtual side, which you, you're, so your virtual is local. Yes. So you pay more than like nine bucks now. I pay her 29 bucks. Way more than nine bucks now. Yeah. Okay. But she's only doing anywhere between three to six hours a week for me right now. Okay, so she's, so she's a part time person that yeah. you're, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, and that's a great thing. So you're like sitting at 60, you said thirty dollars an hour. So you're paying like ninety bucks a week right now. Yeah. A little under five thousand dollars a year. Yeah. For that it's to like actually work. Yeah, that's just not where it's gonna <laughs> stay. I want, I want more hours. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, when you get up to forty hours a week, yeah. at thirty an hour, yeah. now it starts to feel in where you're closer to seventy thousand dollars a year when you when yeah. you work better. Um, what I did, I, I had a lot of called in country hires and eventually I moved out of country, so I've gone uh, to the Philippines and a lot of my my system work. The repetitive stuff is done with the calling for feedback, the updating the MLS listings every single day. So you know when you, mm -hmm. you want your so to show up in someone else's feed, they update those every single day for me. All my trade records are done, all my contracts are generated, all my CMAs are done, all my listing appointments are, are prepped and done in the Philippines. Um, it's uh, my real TPA. So they're real estate specific. I kind of, they train the, their reps on how to work with Trev. Um, I had to work with follow bosses. They're all Google friendly. They're all they're they're pretty well rounded. Do they speak English well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they do. They do. It's actually it surprised me too bad because that was a big concern of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so I have conversations with them. Mm -hmm. They typically don't reach out to their clients. They reach out to other agents, but okay. their English is just fine. Okay. Just fine. You can de you can detect a slight accent there with some mm -hmm. of them, but there's nothing that you'd be like, I can't understand what you're saying. Like okay. it's it's completely clear. There's no issue there. Okay. Um, and my VA is asked basically three questions when they call for feedback. Is your client going to be making an offer on the property? If the answer is yes, they don't be quiet, they're done. And then let me know. If the answer is no, say great, what about the property didn't work for your client? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the third and final question is how do you feel about the price? Mm -hmm. Have all the feedback we need in three questions. So three questions, they can basically just start hitting off pages. They draft that into a Google Sheet, the tracking document for me. And that along with a bunch of other scorecards gets sent out to me every morning at 9 a.m. So I can see how long my listings have been on the market, um, who on my team is working with, what buyers right now, what status those deals are. I can manage from like an information report, mm -hmm. which is cool, because I kept going to ask everyone when I asked. Many of those guys say, I need something every morning, like a, a scorecard that I can look at and, and see everything. I want to know, you know, if we've been at this price for three weeks, let's have a price, price change conversation. Mm -hmm. So just, the, we put something in place where that can all work out. Can I just uh, sort of ask you a question? Yes. Um, a little bit like what Courtney's saying as far as the language. What about when they call? Is there um, like a strange pause? Because I get a lot of cold calling from other countries and there's this like blank mm -hmm. period where you're like, hello, yep. hello, hello, and then you know it's coming from India or somewhere else. Yeah. Is there that kind of strange? No, what you're hearing there? there happens even when I do, let's say, cold calling from Mojo Dialer, okay. because there's, there's a great pocket where it, it waits to connect the two together because it's hitting three lines at yeah. once. Yeah. If you use a triple line dialer, it's the first one that gets picked up. So no, because they're making a direct call, right. you're you're in the action right now. Yeah. Two questions. Um, how many people are on your team? And secondly, what do you pay that? Uh, what do they get paid hourly? The Rosie VA. Nine ninety nine an hour. Okay, no CPP, no EI. Nine ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. it's right. like ridiculous because I mean that's that's three of those and then. For yeah. one, for one local, right? And I guarantee you, three on. I can have one starts at five a.m. Her shift can fall off at one in the afternoon. I can have one until eight, and I could have someone else throughout the night if I wanted to. Like I, I right now my coverage starts from six a.m. and it goes all the way to eight p.m. So if I need something, I get up early. Um, so if I need something right away, they can get working on it. Have you ever have those ideas that just hit you and you're like, God, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, I'm. Spastic like that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if I don't get it out of my head and get someone on it, I'm, I'll skip a workout, I'll just go to work, and that's not what I want to do. Um, so that's how I, how I run my coverage. 
and that's a me thing, not everyone's like that. Most people are a little more sane, but um, mm -hmm. if you just kind of build it for work through, and you don't need two or three people, one is probably sufficient. So let's say for CMAs, right? You just send them, okay, I want a CMA for this property, and they provide it? Yeah, so what I've done, now bear in mind, I don't just say go do it, I've taught them how to do it. I've, I've, I've sat down, I did, and I came up with a very systematic structured approach on how to do it. So for example, if I'm doing a CMA on your condo, condos are generally easier. Yeah. So they know to look at per square foot, like they know to look at the condo piece and parking locker to see it, to make sure the condo piece are somewhat similar. We first look for other units in the stack, so if it's 804 I'm doing, doing a compound pond, did 1004 sell, did 1104 sell, because they typically, they're similar up and down. Mm -hmm. They were looking for similar square size properties, and they might take me 20, and I hold that 20 down to eight. But you know, I can look at it very, very quickly. Get on the phone with them and say, "Yeah, use the first one, number six, number eight, 12." Like, and I can, and then they can boil that all down for me, and I can do that remotely from my phone, right? I can, I can be looking at things wherever I am, have a quick voice call with them. They shrink it all down, and then my listing appointment shows up right on my iPad, and I walk right in, right, and I go. And so I can stay in production the whole time. Even when I'm doing showings, they'll book the showings for me and they'll send me a, a PDF or they'll send me just the link, the travel link, you click that. And then all the lockbox codes are loaded into my Google Calendar for me. So I go to the house, I just pull up my phone, I can open up the appointment time. You know, I'm showing a property with Mr. Smith and you know, 123 Main Street lockbox code is 1234. So the only thing I have to do is tell my clients, hey, when I'm walking up to the house and I pull up my phone, look at it, I'm not texting my friends. I'm getting the code for the front door, just so you know when I'm in here and you're talking to me, I'm looking at my phone. I'm not ignoring you, I'm making sure we can get an ask they don't freeze it up in here. Um, but yeah, you can just kind of keep everything really moving away. And just, I'm always paranoid about writing lockbox codes on the listing and losing the listing piece of paper. Because it's got your name at the bottom of it, right? You lost that paper, it's, yeah, and then it's got their code at the front, just wouldn't want to be responsible for that. But all that stuff happens for me. And it's again, all, you train. I train them on how to do it, yeah. Yeah, and training is the hardest part, I think, when it comes to these. Um, so it's, or when it comes to anyone in particular, they don't ever have to train someone in any job, and then they come back and they ask you another question, another question. How I did the training for the VAs, and this was so simple, I can't believe it hasn't been thought of before. I'm sure it hasn't been thought of, but I basically just put on a headset, and I got screen recording software for $14, and I sat on a Skype call with the VA where they could view my screen. Philippines? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe I will. But you know, I just I, I just made a made a made a movie with them. And then at the end of like I made the movie, I just said, just watch me go through this, write down any questions you had. And so we'd go through just said, now what about this, this, this? And if I miss something, I'd make a supplemental video, like it could be about 15 seconds. Left. Oh, and by the way, this. But I I would sit there with her for two weeks. Anytime I did something for the first time. I screen record it, I'd write it all the steps I wanted to hit, I'd screen record it, I'd talk my way through it like I was explaining it to somebody. And they would take that, that video, load it up on a private Vimeo channel, and work it into the operations manual. So it came loading a listing. Here's how you load a listing on Trev. Pulling comparables for condo, pulling comparables for townhomes. They know to pull semi detached and attached row houses. If it's detached, they know not to pull those two and just to do detached homes. Like once you've figured out how it is you do it, because if you write it all that, you can figure out what you're doing. You just do it, and then I had her type out all the instructions. So I have written instructions now, and I have the video supplement. So if she didn't know how to do something again, she could just go watch the movie. I did it once, and I was done. Unless I screwed something up or missed something, at which point I'm going to go back and make another movie. And then it got to the point where there's stuff she knew how to do, so she could make the movies for those. But when it came time to training the other VAs, not only did they, did they make the movies, but they could they could train up the other VAs on it. And it just became this kind of thing. So whenever I would write an email to their client saying, hey, I'm going to meet in front of uh, 600 Fleet Street to look at that condo. I pulled the building in the city, I could have booked it better. <laughs> um, and, and so I write that email, and now the email that goes out is, hey, if you're meeting in a condo, James will meet you in the lobby, otherwise we'll meet you in front of the house. Like, it, it's just a standard communication that goes out for every single showing. Um, they set it up, they push it in the client's calendars and then in my calendar as well. And I don't think about it anymore. It, it, like, little things like that are at the point now where it just happens, and I go, cool, okay. And then you can just keep rolling. Um, so anything you want. So if you need to order a home inspector, you need to recommend home inspectors, you need to recommend lawyers, you need to recommend mortgage brokers. That email's written. If 
you ask for mortgage broker recommendation, they're going to push it out to you. And it's the same one that, that you got last week and the same one you got four weeks ago. You know, you can change templates as you go. If you need to learn something new or you drop a, you drop a mortgage professional and you're adding another one. But it, it's all the same stuff. And they're just as good at hitting send on an email as you are. Because the email's pretty tight. It, it really is. It is as easy. Anyway, the videos were a huge hack for me for, for getting that stuff done. Because I didn't have to. Do the VAs do any type of lead generating for you? No. No. That's not good. no. no. Um, there are people that do do that. Yeah. There's also a Keller Williams agent in Gary that was using them and had about five hundred thousand dollars in fines put against them. Because so here's the, here's the neat thing with the Do Not Call Registry. It's just not that. It's like CRTC. There's like three different governmental agencies that can converge on you at the exact same time, and you're not getting out without big lawyer bills, mm -hmm. a lot of apologies, and I don't know why, but like yeah. 500,000 like, seems like a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Like I think the fines are crazy, but they are what they are, and I don't want to sit there and deal with those guys. Because yeah. like, eventually you're going to get it. Yeah, but it was just someone didn't scrub a do not call registry, and then you, in theory, too, have to give them access to do not call registries for all the area codes and, and whatnot in the area, which, which has a cost to it. And the companies that supply these VAs for you that, that do the dialing, you know, they talk a great game. And it, it, it is wonderful when it works. Um, do you guys know David Braddock? He's an agent out of uh, the North Mississauga office. He did a VA calling around last year, picked up a deal, one commission, like $820,000, like a massive deal that he got off of the VA call. So there's great stories like that. Um, but then there's the other stories, like the, the guy to bury that's got $500,000 in CRTC fines and everything else. Like, I don't know, that $800,000 commission seems a little rare. I don't know. Has anyone ever heard of anyone getting a commission that big before? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, so to get it off of the VA yeah. call was just insane. So yeah. the commission was $800,000? Yeah, not the deal. the commission. He double-ended like a 130-acre farm at Milton that was right in the path of all those. So he just basically took it to, I think he took it to Green Park and then went, yeah, done. And they just scooped it up. Got to go away. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go back to work after that. <laughs> yeah, it's not well, there's no stress in that deal. So Someone else made the call, you wanted an appointment? Got it. And it would just so happen, like, the, the, the people he went to see were farmers who, who spoke Croatian. He was raised Croatian, so he could like speak. Like, it, it, just, it was like, it was the perfect storm for everything. Yeah, like, yeah. like, you and I got the lead? Nothing. He gets it? Home run. Okay, so we all learn for bold what our top five business priorities, right? It's lead generation, lead follow up, going on appointments, negotiating contracts, and script practice. How many people do these every week on a regular basis? So, okay. I do not script practice. Mm -hmm. I've been getting really good at my LinkedIn. Okay. And then we follow up the other things, but not script so much. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole reason of getting leverage, just so you guys know, is so you can focus more on this. It's like just like the more time you don't have to spend worrying about life and everything that goes with it, the more time you can get better honing your skills that are going to make you a better realtor. The reality is not a lot of people do script practice, but you know, I think someone asked Gary a few years ago, I'm not sure it was a mega camp coming in, I think it was a mega camp, you know, how do you build the perfect agent? He goes, easy, I'll tell you right now. He said, you want, you want me to build the perfect agent? I bring him in the office, and I said, this is your script book. And you throw him in the room with the script book, and say, don't come out and say no that, close the door. Step one. <laughs> when they know it, you say, hey, congratulations, good work. That's a phone, get on it. Don't come out until you have appointments. And, and it was, but it's, it's that simple. There's one person in real life, I a real estate, that I have seen do this and do it well. And like, he, he's a guy that came running the office going, I got a listing, now what do I do? Because most people go, okay, when I get a listing, how do I fill out the paperwork? They, they have to know every single step of the way. He would just go full out whatever step he was in until the next step showed up, and then he'd show up hand front, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get you through that. Okay, and then you get to the next step. I do. I had no idea what any of the steps were, but he would just go deep, deep, deep into whatever that stuff was. So if you just script practice and you went deep on script practice and then you went deep on lead gen, you'd then be on appointments and you'd be script practiced through your scripts for your lead listing appointments, so you'd be fine. And everything just kind of rolls from there. But that is the basics of everything. Has anyone ever heard of another real estate agent talking and you just go, why the hell did you say that? 
all that is is a complete and utter lack of, of, of script practice. Mm -hmm. You know, not all the scripts are necessarily in those little books they give us, but a script is just a canned answer for when someone asks you, mm -hmm. you know, one of those questions. It can be something cheeky, like you know, people walk in your open ask, "Why are they selling?" Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're always looking at motivation because they want to move. <laughs> and they go, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just having something. It, like yeah. that's that's kind of that's kind of a BS one because it's not really going to move the ball forward, but it's it's. You, you have to have an answer for absolutely everything. When you have that, you can move forward effortlessly. You're not left skating. A lot of people can't skate. You put someone in a spot, a lot of people go, uh, you know, you gotta have something. Okay. Quick question about that, actually. Yeah. Have you had clients where they don't want people to know why they're moving? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. And I just, specifically this morning, my client said, listen, we just don't want like our neighbors to know that we bought something that we're like, you know, we just want to kind of keep it all on the down low. Can we do that? And I said, for sure. So, of course, that's something that I'm going to have to be answering for people. But, yeah, you know, for sure. Like, yeah. And it's like, why are they moving? He slept with his secretary, now they're breaking up. Like, yeah. you, you, <laughs> you can't say stuff like that. No, right? So, no, it's, no. you know, and, and you, don't want to, you don't want to indicate that, you know, you know, we get the calls when there's a divorce. We get a call when there's a baby on the way and they're upsizing. Like, we don't want to disclose the motivation of our clients to someone else. Right. Mm -hmm. So. You don't do a deep social media hack on every offer that you put in to find out all of a sudden pictures of the husband stuff. Like I'm all over oh Instagram. My gosh. I, I totally do. I'm not gonna lie. I, I want to know. Okay, you're the you got it for you. This, this is the reason why my Instagram has zero pictures on it. It's like this. Uh, no, but I just stop. The only time that I care is if it's like less than a year or a year, maybe two years. Then I look to see if it's a flip. Then, but you can usually tell why. You can usually tell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you totally you know, open totally the bridge, that. nothing in there. Yeah. 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 So it's, for me, the answer to your question is no, I don't. I have. I, there's people I look at. And, but um, for the most part, no. You got 10 offers on offer night. I don't care. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay. you've got the most okay. amount of money, you've got yeah. a check, your offer's firm. Congratulations. It's yours. I don't. I don't go too deep into that stuff. I mean, again, I have, but it, it just gets to the point where, like, or for me anyway. I'm not saying this is the right way. This is this is the way. Let's get the deal done. Highest amount possible. Let's go. Yeah. Is your business mainly repeat referral, or it's all it really is? It, yeah, it's I'm. Right. I never really got into cold calling. I've done. I've probably made less than 100 cold calls in my life, which sounds like mm -hmm. a lot. But if you're sitting on a mojo, that's like a fraction of a morning. Like it just it just turns through people so quickly. Um, when I got in, when I did the 44 in the first six months, it was all spear. Mm. And it was all referral, referral, referral. And that's that's really how we've done just about everything. Okay. The only exception to that is when I started listing pre construction developments. Um, then you just you didn't do any deals with people. Right. You've never heard of them. Mm -hmm. But it's it's I will say that working with people that are referrals or, or from that sphere. For me, that's the most fun part of the business. I, like my my breakout day back in 2014 or 2015, I sold 48 homes in an afternoon, and it was just like that was cool. But I'm like, I feel kind of hollow on the inside. Like it was just like I did a lot of deals, but it wasn't the same. I got a bigger high off of like getting a first time home buyer into like some condo in King West. Like like they were all emotional and happy, and that was way more fun for me than than moving all those homes. It was cool, but. It just wasn't the same. So I think the repeat and referral business for me, that's kind of the, that gives me the, the warm fuzzies a lot more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So your lead gen is mostly spent in your sphere? Yes. Now, so I send out monthly newsletters as a service that, that I pay for those. I'm sorry, is it incredibly hot? Yeah. Open that door. Open that door. Open that door. Uh, yeah, it's like a little like strong hot. I wasn't sure. Zone. <laughs> No, 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 it's, we always have to open doors because it gets very Yeah. Cool. Um, so, it's not the best ventilated. My, um, my repeat, my approach, so I send out a newsletter, and I'll send my birthday cards, and someone does a deal, I send out a free sweet gift basket. Um, but my big thing is my Christmas party, or my, my Santa Claus parade party. So I rent the second floor of the Intercontinental Hotel on the Lord Street in and I invite like three or four hundred people in, and I have a big, catered affair, so parents watch the Santa Claus pray with their kids indoors. Awesome. Well, everyone gets rained on or snowed on or freezes outside. So the harsher <laughs> the weather, the better my pay. Mm -hmm. um, but and that's that's turned into the big thing. But, like the bill on that every year is mm -hmm. that, that, that's a big that's a big. But 
but that's also that's where I spend a lot of my client appreciation dollars are are on that. And I always, without fail, come out of that party with a deal that completely wipes the party green. And so it's uh, it, there's always someone there who's like, okay, I want to talk to you. This is happening this year. Or this is happening over the next year. I need to sell this. I need to do this. Um, this year I didn't think I was going to, but we're going to market next week with with the deal that, that came out of there, like the week that followed. And that's great. But I, sphere is is everything for me. I mean, if you think about it. It's kind of a, a fun little millionaire real estate agent. It's a uh, 50 to 1 if you're farming people that you haven't met. And it's 12 to 2 if you're farming people that you've met. And this it's a, it, this should be 6 to 1 if we know math, but the 12 to 2 is one referral and one deal. That's why they, they split it out from 12 to 2. So you're going to get basically one deal for every six people in your database. Let's say you're really, really bad and you do one deal out of every 24 people in your database. You know, you have 200. 40 people in there, you got 10 deals a year. You know, the metrics on database conversion to success or dollars at uh, New Orleans is pretty high. They, they, I, I didn't go this year, they went through that. They, they actually, mm -hmm. I think it was yeah, for, every, for every, what was it, 1,500 people in your database, it was 10 deals or something? Like that. So 15 to 1. Okay, so it's right between the metrics that we were talking about. I think it changed, changed slightly this year, I think. Because of the MRE. Was it, was it less than that? <laughs> but that's, that, that's, 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 but they had broken down like a dollar amount, like different stages of your database. And like how much your database is worth yeah. if you're working in that kind of thing. Yeah. Here's the thing where that math doesn't work here, but it doesn't work here in a good way. Our average price point versus anything in the US, like they run those maps. You read The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, that book was written on an average sales price of like $257,000. So if you're doing eight deals in Toronto, you should have two assistants. No, well, no, 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 not at all. You should have one. But what I'm saying is you'll make a lot more money. Your profitability should be big. You know Ben Kinney is in this town right now with the team? A lot of people don't know that. Mm, why? Why? Expand. Because here's a guy that can do 2,000 deals at this crazy little price point. Look, if the people that can do 400, 500 deals a year on Maybe his Maybe Ben team, Kinney has expanded his team to Toronto? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes. Okay. I think he was physically here like to no, the no. city. No. So because our price points are so good, like if you can do 400, 500 deals a year in like let's say Detroit, where you're like $60,000 price points, like if your machine is that well oiled and that efficient that it's viable in a $60,000 market, imagine it where the average ticket price is a million. So if you could hire more assistants or just get one really, really good one and just figure out how to be a hell of a efficient. Like I don't know anyone in GTA, maybe Peggy Hell, who's like up around that 500, 600 deal a year mark and has the machine, but even her, she's got a gigantic operation. I think if you took hers down to the States in some of those markets, I could be wrong. I don't know enough about her structure, but I don't think she'd be economically viable down there. But the people that learned how to figure it out on a shoestring budget down there, if they came up here, we're dead in the water. She looked uh, she she <laughs> it's funny how everybody knows she loves company. She's So, uh, so yeah, my database, if I'm going to spend three hours of lead generating, I'd rather do it at 12 to 2 than 50 to 1. It's just four times sufficient. But do you spend three hours a day on your database? Sometimes two, sometimes one, sometimes I don't because I'm working on something else. Like today after here, I'm not going to get any lead gen. I came from the gym, I came to here. I'm going to sit down with the builder for the rest of the afternoon. That builder, I guess in a sense, it's the agenda of doing a thousand units for the rest of the year. It's, it's, I need to go sit down in order to make that happen. So it's, I know it's the generation or lead nurturing or lead follow up, but it's, I, I, I moved into a bit of an awkward place where I, I don't necessarily fit the traditional, traditional real estate model anymore, but I've got buyer's agents that I'm coaching on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings into that model. So if you have the resale side of the business, what I'm layering on right now is the pre-construction side and the developer relationships. I've just gone from listing one sign on the ground at a time to 300 at a time. So you, one of your buyer's agents will sit in that office and you'll still... They're lead genning right now. I've got two going on the phones right now, lead genning. And so I coach them twice a week, or three times a week right now, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. One day is a one-on-one, -on -one, one day is a script practice where we're all going there and I'm drilling them. And the, the Friday session is just exchange. So they, here's what I came across this week, or on Wednesday, I'll find out where we get, where you get lit up, where you get killed, where you get killed, and then we'll, we'll coach on that on Friday, just to keep it in the program. Yeah. Okay, so where, 
Yes? These are, these are the items that you want to keep focused on. This is what you keep. Everything else you give away to your events. What work to get rid of. So we've determined our hourly rate. Here's a big one. Our lifestyle and goals. You know how I said, you know, maybe a stage one business is, uh, is good enough for your level two, level three? You need to determine what you want to do. If, like, I'm a part-time dad. I've got my daughter Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or sometimes just Thursday nights in a week. I got a lot of extra time on my hands. So when it comes time to putting in work, I can do that effortlessly and I'm not really affecting anyone other than myself. So I can do that. I mean, that's viable for everyone. Um, but you've got to determine how many hours a week you want to work and what works for you. You know, you can balance life and balance work and, and find that sweet spot. You're set. It's a time to get in a balance, but, but then you're set. But that's such a huge piece. And again, that's personal to everybody. Level seven is not for everybody. Level one is not for everybody. You just have to figure out where you fit. And this is a huge piece of that. Um, and then the next thing you do is just determine what are you doing that's adding to the bottom line? What are you doing that's helping drive profit? Sometimes people have little intangibles that they do or things that they're able to do that's able to add more profit to the bottom line. If you can consider those factors, then you can decide what work to give away. Here's what we spend our time doing, right? Yeah, it's a bit of an eye chart. Mm -hmm. You know, calendar management, scheduling appointments, maintaining online filing systems, performing on your market research, booking travel arrangements to and from family reunion, things like that. The county can book up their own plane tickets. Right? You don't have to. Like, you just tell them, you put me in business class or you don't put me in business class, find me the best flight, get me there. I want to get there direct. I want to get there, you know, I'll take up the two stops or I'll take up the nine hours to get there. You can tell them this and they can figure it out. Um, they can do all those things. Um, this, unfortunately, is all the stuff that we add to a to-do list. We're like, okay, I'm getting stuff done, I'm getting stuff done. But nothing of this is making us money. None of it. None of it, none of it, none of it. feels good, though, to cross stuff off the checklist. It's because, I mean, to cross lead gen off the checklist, you got to spend, like, probably two hours that day. If I spent two hours, I could get half this list done. And that's that's the trap people fall into. It's, it's a whole talk about the success list that Gary talks about versus the to-do list, the concept and the one thing. There's certain things that will make you successful. There's certain things that you're just getting stuff done, but you're not really Busy versus productive. Um, social media. Do you guys do Instagram posting and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Does anyone have my my Jason's group Instagram? I know your stuff. Okay. Yeah, quotes that are yes, I don't. Down. I don't have Instagram on my phone. That's not me. That that again is all coming out of the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. But they are inspirational. So they are. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so and even the you know the just list of things that get posted there. None of it's none of it's mine. Um, that all, that all goes through. So all this stuff, and I'm, I'm saying that just to show you that this stuff can absolutely, absolutely be done, and you don't have to pay crazy North American wages to do it. Because when we look back at the FBA, what's up? I'm now following you. Oh. Let's see if they follow you back. <laughs> um, all right, can you just follow me? Do you have to need permission, or you just one has no, to have permission? No, I can just. Yeah, so two. So my yeah, so my account, which one. has zero pictures. What's so unless you want to look at my one profile picture, that's all. It's the same one. picture as the yeah. public one. Is so, it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It shows you how great I am. So. Oh, you have a personal one too. I see. With nothing on it. With nothing on it. Yeah. So no, you do none, none of this? I am done. It's not me. So that was my personal account with all my friends on it. Yeah. And they they cleaned it all out. And they opened me up a a personal account. Yeah. Took all the pictures of me and my kid out there. And then so do you have, like, I spent a lot of time in the last year looking at Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, and your daily rates and your boosts and everything else and all of that. Do you do any of that? Yeah, but on the reconstruction side, I spend about 20 grand a month with reconstruction ads right now. But that's se that's separate from resale. Like, do not spend that on resale. I don't know how to make that budget work with resale. With pre-construction, I do. Um, like we had an event last December. We hired Scott and Gilbert, Mike Weckerly from Dragon's Den. Like we had like a six or seven hundred thousand dollar event. I would never do that for resale because I just you can't make that. You can't make that yeah. Um, so what did the developer cover? I would not have it. No, I was just wondering if you had like you. Do you just hand them a credit card and go here, and they get everything with with the Instagram? Yeah, that's all free. That's just posting. 
So you're 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 pushing against doing it. Yeah, my beat is yeah. so so on that list. Like I don't, you can probably see all. The, can you see all the people followers too? No. Like a, a lot of them. Like I built that up. That was my personal page. I'm not saying do this. This is just what happened. All my friends, my whole following is on there. All my clients were on there. When when I have my big Santa Claus parade party. Yeah. For you bring your kids. Yeah. And you see the American Girl doll when you check in and the lightsabers for the boys and all the other fun stuff. You have to complete a scavenger hunt. One of the things is you need to follow us on Instagram. Right. So and it's just another way for me to get them. And they have to update their contact info in my database because if the kids want to be entered in the ballot to win these prizes, yeah. then they you know they keep nagging their parents to go do this do this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I don't pay for anything on there. Okay. I just pay the VA to. It looks like it's a lot of real estate agents anyway. You know, they they gutted my all my personal stuff out of there. They literally pulled out all the images and just flipped it over. James, doesn't the developer cover a lot of your marketing costs? For it would really you? depend on the development. Some developers, yes, some developers, no. I mean, developing is a lot of money. Yeah, I know. So, like, I've had developers say, okay, I'm going to pay you zero dollars uh -huh. um, up until this price point, and anything over that price point you can keep. Which sounded like a great deal until you earned like $5.4 million in commission. They're like, okay, we got to talk. I'm like, I figured that was coming. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the market was like two years ago when the market just started skyrocketing, went up like 30%. Yeah, you know, we were we were selling stuff at 420. We weren't able to sell at 329, just a little bit before. And then you sell like 60 homes. You got like six million dollars sitting there. It's like they're not gonna let us keep this. There's no way. Yeah, yeah. So, and they did nowhere near it. But anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it really depends on the structure. Some developers, yeah, they'll pay for it all, and you just manage it for them. Others are much more hands-on. They want to do it themselves, and you just show up at the sales center and you do your thing. Everyone's got their own strengths and weaknesses. So the developers come after the success, or was it nurtured like mutual growth? I I did one project in Waterloo that we sold really well, and um, and then someone that was trying to sell a bunch of uh, townhomes and hadn't for the year they sold six out of like fifty in a year. They said, "Can you take a run at it?" And we raised prices thirty thousand dollars to offset. We went for six percent commission. Raised prices thirty, completely repositioned it, took it back out to the market. We crushed twenty sales in the first week. And it's just how they're taken to market didn't work. We, we figured we knew how to reposition it and make it go. It cost us a little bit of work to do it, but there was really no, it was like a little bit of printing cost. I think our risk was $1,500. I'm trying to figure it out. But we figured we'd get one sale, which would offset the 1500 And yeah, things just went really well. And then another developer that couldn't sell things heard about us when we went over there. And then another developer that couldn't sell things heard about us went over there. And then we were able to make our way out of the problem projects and into like the, ah, uh, like, into the planning level. So when we're launching in June, we're sitting in boards in February, planning and all that, changing configuration of the suites, and that's that's a fun experience when you can sit there. Like we did one in Hamilton Luster, so platinum condos in Hamilton Luster. And um, originally they had a bunch of two bedrooms, thousand square foot two bedrooms running the stack of the building, and we took it, we split it down into um, uh, bachelors and one bedrooms, and they were the first thing that sold through. Smaller units, you know, so we sold them for like 625 to 640 per square foot. The, the one, the two bedrooms they were going to sell was like 480 a foot. So we, we netted them an extra three and change million dollars. They were really, really happy with us. But we knew what was selling in the market. We knew what we'd be able to sell to, to different investors and things like that. So we're now at the point where it's starting to, we're being listened to and it's starting to, to happen. Mm -hmm. We have a specific team that works with your pre construction. Um, yeah, so David Radica out of Mississauga is kind of my. My right hand on that and he's just he's a guy that when I say I want this to happen he's like I got it and you can go in and, and make it all happen and that it started that way he started working with me when I was selling a, a condo in Waterloo and he was still working for General Motors full time um, he came in real estate and knew nothing about the industry um, well he knew a little bit he was a real estate investor he was he's a really smart guy um, but he's also like, does anyone know anyone that's like really smart, but also like the nicest person in the world and they can't believe it when someone else like lies or takes advantage of it. That was Dave in the beginning. So we got Dave up to speed and Dave's good now. But uh, Dave's now at the point, you know, almost five years later where we were negotiating a listing on a $140 million development. And I was away on vacation and I said, go. And I could turn that over to Dave. And actually, when I got the phone call letting me know where we ended up, I think he did better than what I would have done. Which was that was a really really cool experience to go. Hmm, he's better than me there. Mm -hmm. All right, smart. Where would you say is the best place to lead gen if you want to break into or work with builders? Um, it, it, I mean, builders generally do not go to like 
they're not very social, I find. I've met a lot of builders and assholes. Yeah, they're <laughs> assholes. First of all, they're assholes. Part of the but they, <laughs> they don't socialize. They don't go to, you know. No, they socialize. No, I, went oh, to Super, I went to Super Bowl 50 on a private plane, five people, 10,000 okay, yeah, 10, bucks like a ticket. No, I mean, with other builders, they don't come back. It cost you 10? Yeah, 10,000 a ticket, yeah. So, like, you can get there, but understand there's a lot of risk that goes into it. So, like, there's, I would never coach anyone to do it the way I did it, because what I did was a giant swatch of luck, yeah. and timing, and just everything kind of rolled yeah. into place. What I did do well is I was ready. I was there, I was working, I was talking, I was scripted, I was, like, when the opportunity showed up, I didn't say, okay, now I have to get up to speed so I can work the belt. Right. I was doing everything as if I was doing it for a long time. Like this, this to get to the point where I'm listing buildings now, took from 2014 until essentially last summer. So it was like four years of like they're pounding on the door, pounding on the door, pounding on the door. Like it was relentless, and then everything kind of exploded. But there's a lot of like pain and headache along oh, yeah. the way, and, and I, I don't know that I could tell you, oh, here's just how you work with developers. I just know that it was just, it was just relentlessness and and just studying. New developments will launch. You're studying the marketing, studying what works, figuring how fast it sells. You're looking at all the competition. Like you, you just you become a student of it. And I still I know I could have been better there. So I think when you start focusing on stuff, it just it starts to happen. But I, I I wouldn't even know where to begin to tell you how to go go at that. Like it's big time. I'll tell you that before I started getting these things, I probably spent. Over that multiple year period, I was probably a million dollars into just in terms of expenses and in terms of like doing deals, paying things, reinvesting. Like yeah. I, I'd make the money by selling developments, but I wouldn't take it out personally. I would just reinvest it back into figuring out how to do more. And it's one of those things where you're either dumb or it works. And everyone will tell you you're dumb if it doesn't work. And if it works, mm -hmm. everyone says, oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. But it was, I, I didn't know if I was doing it right or wrong, but I didn't know what else to do. So, who is building your residential resale side while you're doing? Like you were managing, you, you were able to manage both? No, there's times where it was, it was hard. And so when I tell you, like, oftentimes people in front of them, like everything just seems like it was easy and hot. No, man, I hit walls, I hit ground. I went through times where it sucked. I went through times where I had no money. I had times where I had a lot of money. Like, it's, you know, people see, oh, you know, you're number one candidate, you'll be loaded. Like, dude, you have no idea what I spent this year. Like, and, it's, and it wasn't exactly in line with MREA. But just understand, there's a lot of pain. It's not easy because it's no easy. No pain, no gain. But, yeah, but, it's, but it's, it's easy. Everyone does it, and, and it's a cliche. But but truly, if I said, oh yeah, it's easy, just do these things, you go, oh okay, I'm just gonna do that, and then it'll be nice and easy. You don't have all this money. It's not how it works. It's the suffering, a lot of it. But you're doing it knowing that the outcome's gonna be there, and you just keep kind of pushing, 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 and then it happens. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I wish there was a prettier, nicer picture of lots of flowers and bunnies that I could paint, but okay. sometimes it's just it's just that. But what helped me get there, what helped everything run, is that lemon trees. Because if I didn't have a virtual assistant there at nine bucks an hour, you know, I mean, there were the times where it would have been hard to keep an assistant. Because sometimes when you've got the extra salary going, it's like, oh, you know, your bills are, are sucking you dry. You never want to get there. Like I went really, really aggressive with that stuff. You could probably scale it back and be just fine. Um, but again, I'll chalk that up to a mistake on my part. I just didn't do it. I could be a lot more efficient than what I did. So if you were reassessing things and giving advice to someone who's probably close to considering an assistant, yep. would you go virtual other side of the world first? 100%. 100%. Nine bucks an hour, no CPP, no EI. Like when you hire someone, like, there are $40,000 your salary is not your only expense. You've got to remit your employer's portion of the Canada Pension Plan to the government. You're remitting your portion of their employment insurance to the government. It's not just a deduction from them. The bigger deduction happens on the employer side, not, not the employee side. <coughs> so, for me, yes, because you can add one VA, you can add another VA, and then when you're ready to take the next leap and maybe hire a buyer's agent, and you wanna, you've got two direct reports here with two VAs, hire operations person, one direct report that takes care of those two direct reports into them, and now you can start working on the showing assistant side of things. So you've got leverage on the admin side, you now have leverage on the showing side, and so you can focus on listings. Or you can work with more buyers, you can deal with two buyers essentially on any given night, 
they're unlocking the door on the east side of town and you're going into the door on the west side of town. But the virtuals, if you look at the millionaire real estate agent economic model in the salaries portion, VAs are one of the easiest ways to keep your salary cost in line. They're a third of the price of a North American based uh, North American based admin, and they can do everything they can. Like there's nothing that you do in your business that's so freaking complex that it can't be standardized. Like if they can if they can pull a CMA and get a listing report ready for me, or a listing um, presentation ready for me. I, I don't know what what's the most complex task that you have in your daily. So your system, in terms of your day-to-day -day operations and everything that you were doing, was locked in. It was nuts and bolts type. No, but I made it nuts and bolts type when I hired that VA. So here's where I screwed up. This is I'll give you a big uh-huh. I went through one, two, three, four assistants slash operations people before I finally took a VA and started doing it right. So I had the local model. When you're not, you can't be here to train. You can't be sitting shoulder to shoulder with the VA unless you take a nice vacation in the Philippines, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to get used to training them remotely, <clears throat> first of all. So the relationship starts as a distant relationship. If you're not in the office, they don't run around and have coffee with someone else in the office, or they don't they don't lose focus on, on you. They're used to working this way. But I would sit there, and I said, like, for the first week, I just said, look, I'm not going to be out of the office much for the first week or for the first two weeks. But every time I did something new for the first time, I wrote that email for the last time. The I'll meet you in the lobby if it's a condo and this if it's a freehold for the last time. That's now locked. Uh, I wrote, you know, booking a home, showing them how to book home inspectors. I showed it once. It was done. I showed them how to do trade records. I did it once. I'm done. I had to make an investment of one to two weeks where I was just like, another video. Okay, another video. Here we go. And and it was just it was just creating a library of videos nonstop because here's how you load a listing. Here's how you Refresh a listing every single day on MLS. Here's how you do a price change. Here's how you market unit is sold. Find listing where the selling brokerage info. Do this like look, look, look up the seller or the buying agent's name. And you take them through like every time you're doing something, you literally are documenting it for for one to two weeks. Access to MLS for that. So you like and try. I'll get a text message saying, can I have your your Trev access? That's what I do. Yeah. And, and they, they know the first two numbers, and I just. I'll even take a screenshot because do you have the authenticator on your yeah, phone? Right. Take a screenshot and send it over to them. Because otherwise you have to spend like it's yeah, some, it's not expensive, but like maybe five hundred per assistance and then it's got a year so that have access. It's so I've got one expensive. of those two for my operations guys. Right. So if I'm in MLS doing my stuff or if I need to be in there, they have a separate one and it's like they'll load all my listings into that. Maybe that's because No, that's because I'm a separate brokerage, never mind. But they'll load, they'll load listings up. Because you have some brokerages can, can broker the listings for you. I just have the broker load under the, the master broker key um, um, for me. And then when the listings get pushed live, they go live. But you know, they'll send an email into the client that we've got like a, it's almost like a Google sheet. And it goes into the client and says, hey, when would you like the showing us to start? What's the earliest? On what day? So they can literally check Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the checkbox, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. So the clients just fill this all out. It's all, it's all done. Like you know, I don't, I don't have to ask the clients these questions. It's just all the questions they would ask. The email gets sent to the clients. The clients fill out the form, reply to it, send it back in. The VA is implemented. Give it to the people at the front desk. No showing Sunday before eleven. Showings after this time. Twenty four hours bonus. They set everything. Um, you know when your showings get booked on your properties, and you're like, okay, I got another showing booked. I don't get those emails anymore. I get in that link that I get every single day. I can see tomorrow. Who showed it today? Now, I don't need to be so on top of things that I need to know by the minute who's showing it. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, you get a phone call from someone saying, "Hey, I'm going to show your listing. Can I do this? Can I do that?" Um, a technology technology leverage. You are offering one of my properties that's a multiple offer property, like one two three Main Street. You'll see in the brokerage remarks for update on offers or to get a copy of the home inspection. Email one two three Main Street at jamesbestgroup.com. You send an email there, they can do an autoresponder. We'll send you back a link to a Dropbox, which has got the home inspection in it. Um, and and I, I go in and update the autoresponder. You know, it's Tuesday at 11 a.m., two offers registered. Because like if you have a listing and everything's going, how many offers now? How many offers now? I just keep saying, send an email there, they'll get the response in real time. And they do, because the autoresponder kicks it back to them 
absolutely immediately. So this little piece of technology, that we're, like it's an out of office system. We all have it. Mm -hmm. We just never thought to open up a two dollar ninety nine cent per month Google account and put an autoresponder there. And again, the VAs can update the autoresponder to the last time they updated it and how many offers were registered. The nice part for me is rather than a listing home inspection up on the listing where I can't see who's interested in looking at it, mm -hmm. I can tell who's asked for the home inspection. Right. I can mm -hmm. tell who keeps hitting that on responder. I'm like, they haven't registered yet, but they've hit it 12 times in the last three hours, they're coming. <laughs> like, I get an idea. So when my client calls me and I've got offers at night, I get a pretty strong idea as to what's going to happen. So it's, and again, I train the DAs. The, the email autoresponder is a form letter email. All they do is they update property address, the link to the home inspection, what time the out of office was updated, and how many offers are registered. I don't know how to do it. But little technological hacks like that just make life so much easier. Because you're training ready for offers and you've got 12 different agents asking 12 different things. Here's the format. Bring your best offer. Here's where we're doing offers. Bring a deposit check. Client's ideal closing date. It's like all the questions they usually ask. And if there's something outside of that they have to ask, hey, give me a call. But everything's everything's on the way. Right James, I have a quick question just about the VA and uh, CNA and stuff like that. Um, like right now with my CNA, with my um, assistant, you know, she doesn't know whether she should go east of a certain street or north yeah. of a certain, you know, that kind of thing. Yes, trust, so, trust with the CMA is. Well, no, it's just more like I guess helping them understand like neighborhoods and like why you wouldn't go east of a certain street or north of another. But have you come up against that? How have you done it? Yeah. So all I have to do is send me a screenshot of, of the area they pulled. Mm -hmm. And then you'll say, okay, and, and, they, in. and they send me all the links too, so I can take a look at it. Right. And they just include the map when they send me the email, mm -hmm. so I can look at it and go. Okay, eliminate 7, 12, 13, 19, and 20. Okay, like you said. Those are gone. Okay. And then I can then so I can That's what it. I think I'll start doing then, just because I find that sometimes it's not quite in the boundary that I need it to be. Totally. Because like, mm -hmm. I want to be south of a net, north of blue, because right. right? like, you know, there's those main streets, because I'm going to yeah. make a big difference. And school zones and all that stuff factors in, right? Totally. So, yeah. totally. And you know that, and that's really, really, if you can figure out how to impart that knowledge on them, yeah. let me know, because I don't okay. know how to do that yet. <laughs> but, I, but I know I can go yeah. get rid of that, 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 that. Give me the rest. Okay. And then they just print them, merge them into a PDF, and all the comps show up in the report. Cool. But they're not doing adjustments or anything? No. 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 I mean, you're, you're doing the. For me, that's a yeah. conversation with the client. So yeah. when you look at your property and this property, you know, where do you see yourself? Where do you place yourself on this list? I and mean, that, that's that for me is allowing them to price their home yeah. based on what I'm showing them. So some people are more technical in their, in their, in their adjustments. I'm more freestyle. I keep those things in, in mind, like oh, that. Well, yeah, but that one had they have a garage. How much? How much do you think the garage is worth? Like, do, would you like the garage? You can, you can have those conversations with them and feel it out. But so, out of a matter of curiosity, more than anything, when you go into your home inspection, you said you have everything on your iPad. Do you is it a technology? Do you use the technology in your listing presentations? Do you go in with everything with you, but not in front of them, or do you have like I have a, every a hard copy? I don't give them everything. Mm -hmm. like, if some people go full geek, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to play. Um, but I would rather be over prepared. Most people don't want to get ready. Like, how many people here are in the high C? Okay, I'm the C is my leading on the disc. I'm I'm, I'm C D. Like I'm basically, I have no I, I have no S. No. Um, so. Honestly. So if I get to come across someone that's like super analytical, I'm gonna have a great time. I'm gonna have a lot of fun on that appointment. Yeah. I'm coming across someone that's like, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, and they're all like, I'm like, oh my god, you're sucking the life out of me. Just, but you know, you got to show up for those too. They don't want to see that stuff. They don't care about that stuff. So you just, you have to be ready for any situation. But I tend to present more to the style of the person that I'm, that I'm using. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like if, like if someone showed up to me and they were all like, touchy feely, happy huggy, oh, we'll just figure it out. Good luck. You're like you're not getting a call back. That's that's me. I want to know that you know what the hell's going on. I need to know that you know your stuff. And then if you've got a great personality on top of that, awesome. If you're dry as toast, but your stuff's getting done, and you can show me where we need to go, I'm good with that. That's me. I mean, I work for you. I work for you. But everyone's got their own their own unique flavor. I think that's part of our job as agents is to be a little bit chameleon that way. There's some times where you gotta. Up your game, you know, I've got to smile a lot more and I've got to be a lot more outgoing. And there's times where when someone is just pulled back and they don't sit down and have more of a analytical conversation, I pull back and you mirror and match them, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay.
So that's the list of all the stuff that a VA should be doing for us. That much cheaper rating. James, okay. can we get a copy of the, the slides? Can we get that sent to us, these slides? Yeah, do you want to know? Yeah. Yeah. There's no, 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 it's a summary. All of the yeah. stuff you want to give them? Yeah. yeah. Really, <laughs> here's how you determine it. If it's on that list, you keep it. Everything else goes. Like, it, it, it really is that simple. That makes you money. Nothing else does. Okay, so the types of leverage are the people, systems, and tools. I talked to you a little bit about you know, the systems and the tools today, like the Google autoresponder. Like, it's a really simple thing, right? I get a lot of compliments like, oh, wow, how do you do that? That's really awesome. I think it's just a matter of offices, is it, man? Like, it's. It's a really, really easy thing to put a bat in a Dropbox and you're deadly because you can get anyone, anything instantly when they ask for it. Or agents call you and say, hey, can you send me a copy of the home inspection? You know, I'm not in the office. I'm sitting away to ask. You know, I'm not in the office right now, but on the bottom Sorry. of the listing of the brokerage marks, there's an email address. When you send an email to there, instantly the inspection will be sent back to you at the Dropbox link. So, so you know, if I was here, I'd totally send it. Okay, thanks. Okay. Don't even worry about it. I don't need to. I can't even call it. Want to book a show? Good. Call the front desk. Like it's just there's certain things that you don't need to touch that stuff. I mean, I feel like you just keep giving them every time, every time they call you. Like they just start to lean on you like a crutch, especially when offer dates are coming. So I like to just. Um, so the systems we talked about, like you know, going on a listing appointment. So I'll send an email to Joyce. Listing appointment tonight, one two three Main Street. She knows all the steps to go in that system in terms of getting things ready. She knows what I like. She knows how to pull my walk score reports or my hood queue and all the other fun little things that I package it all together because I showed her. Here's how I like it. When stuff's in my calendar, if it's pink, if it's color coded pink, it's time with my daughter. Anything like that is is time with her. Um, if it's green, it makes money. If it's blue, it's personal. If it's gray, I haven't yet accepted or looked at it. But they know how to color code everything because when I look at something, I want to know at a glance what I'm what I'm walking into. Like from across the room, I can look at my monitor and basically figure out what what type of activity is coming up. And that's just me being a nerd. You know, you don't have to have to go down my path and stuff the right way or the wrong way. But I'm just saying that to demonstrate you can get them to do anything that you want to do. You can be as as um, Specific. As specific as you want. Like we were having trouble getting feedback. The agents, or one of the agents said, you know, I had a hard time getting feedback this week. So what are you doing? Well, calling a brokerage or calling their cell phones. So I'm getting messages. So okay, it's just surrounding text. Hey, dude. I like text. Want to get your feedback from this? A lot of people like text. I hate I text. Yeah. Agents text me, I ignore them. Email or phone. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't touch text. And that's, <laughs> and that's me being difficult. Because that's just me. For feedback, it's great. I love it. For yeah. I think it's smart because I, I will take the two seconds to go good, bad, this, that, so. Do you guys dictate your texts at all? No. Oh, yeah, I voice text all the time. Me too. So I can't even get some messed up words. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can understand it enough. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Um, so just really, the who's going to do it, how are they going to do it, um, and what will they do it with? So these are just you know the systems. Yeah. I'm a big believer in the Google platform. I can't wait until this, this new Kelly database drops. I think it's going to be absolutely Amazing, um, and that will. I think we'll have to. Re, I'm going to be going back to the operations manual. We're going to be making more videos. Like the, I've got to, when stuff breaks like that, you've got to fix it again. Mm -hmm. um, and then so the question becomes, when to hire? So there's three things to consider. One, belief in yourself and where you can take the business is the big one. And this is the scariest one, and this is the hardest one to wrap your head around. Because I still remember my OP coming to me saying you need to hire someone like. Huh? <laughs> like obviously things went went pretty well, and she knew stuff that I didn't because of how fast you know she saw things taking off. Like I made my entire annual salary in the first week, three weeks in the business, but it was just more of a like I still didn't believe in myself. Like, I didn't know. Like my, my belief was in her, and she told me what to do, and I followed along. And that was, I guess, a fortunate thing that I had enough belief that she knew what she was doing to listen to her. Um, but really understanding where you want to go, what that level is, and then believing in yourself and taking the step. And here's where a VA becomes easier, because you can get like a part-time VA at $9.99 a week, so it's $200 a week, right? So let's say you try this experiment for, let's say two months, three months, two months. It's a $1,600 risk. Would you spend $1,600 to see if you could push your business to the next level? Probably. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very reasonable investment. Um, and you will, you will give away jobs and you will never want back. That's just a guarantee. That's what my coach told me to do. She said, make a list of all the stuff you do every day that you don't want to do anymore, 
and guarantee you'll be able to do more. Hundred percent. Yeah. And again, the quickest way to be list is it one of those five things? No, it's theirs. Now I got to figure out how to train them on how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your so touch programming now goes through your VA. Yeah. I. I don't. He touches do now. Anything. No. <laughs> Which every man loves to hear, by the way. I touch nobody, <laughs> but everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's not me. It's someone else. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of the great things about the internet, you always touch yourself. <laughs> oh <God>. <laughs> <laughs> David always likes to stretch the limits, let me just tell you. Hold on. So, yeah, and then, so then, just hiring smart. I think a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to hire my friend, or I'm going to hire this, hire this person. And, and I think, I think, you know, this company has some great trainings on how to hire people. Mm, it's actually coming. Coming. Did it come back? I was going to say career vision, it's coming. Career vision is coming, I think. And yeah. Like, Soon. Who's, yeah. Who's coaching? Next one. Uh, you know, I think it's actually Mr. Francis. No, it's not Jim Beck. What's our guy? Our Canadian. Jim. No. Rock. No, our 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 Canadian president. Is that what he is? CEO. Oh, yeah. I don't know his name. Jim. No, no. David. David. Somebody. Yeah. All right. That's that. We good. Yeah. Um. So use use the right systems when you're hiring, and then understand whether you want to grow or shrink. Like, there's there's very prominent agent in my office. He used to do over 200 deals a year. He's winding things down right now. He's got him and assistant and, and buyer's agent. They're just doing their thing because they're coming down and they're hurt. That's fine. Mm -hmm. If you're going up, you just need to decide where you want to go because you need to have a plan to get there. And if you're just saying, I'm going to hire an assistant. Okay, why? Well, because I want to get my transactions up and then I want to hire a showing assistant. Okay, why? Well, because when I hire the showing assistant, I free this up. I can now do Wednesday nights with, with you know, hockey with my son or I can do you know, weekends off, or I can. So this is like the, the thing for me has been weekends now are actually weekends, and this is like I I, I now right. I hit this now for the first time since 2015. That's that's when I had it last, and then and again I'm kind of I'm kind of back into it now, and it feels really good because I can sprint and cover more ground Monday to Friday with complete recharge on the weekend than I can if I'm jogging seven days a week all year. Like I'm I'm much faster. I'm much more efficient when I've got the mental downtime. And we need that. Like for me personally, has anyone ever got to a point where like you you almost start to resent the clients? They call you like oh, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. yeah. And that, like, <laughs> so when I knew I had a problem was when a client called and said, you know, I want to put in an offer on a place that didn't have multiple offers. Like it's one of those things where you know you're gonna get a deal done. I was like, like you should be jumping for joy. It's, it's Twenty five grand staring you in the face and you're going. I don't want it. Ah, like it's yeah. I'm like something's off here, and all it was was I was just burnt out, spending too much time doing the wrong kind of things. And when I come back to setting your schedule and understanding the lifestyle you want, if you're saying to your clients, "I'm not free Sunday," sorry, mm -hmm. you get me Saturday, get me Friday. It's when you start going, "Okay, yeah, okay, I'll see you Saturday, I'll see you Sunday," and you're missing you know, the get together of all of your friends, and they're sending you. You know, pictures of them all together having fun while you're out working, and you're with this client, they're driving me nuts because they're like me, they're high C, and they just ask all the questions under the sun, mm -hmm. and they're like, like oh, I start to hate the business. So I think leverage is a super important piece for A, your mental health, in terms of just being able to keep going, keep going for a longer period of time, um, but be just the understanding of, of, of where you want to take this. Like, I think you're a better real estate agent when the stuff you hate about the business isn't your job. When you can just focus on the stuff you love, it's a much better place to be, mm -hmm. much better place to be. And then you do more deals when you're inside. Yeah. Like when you started uh, hiring VI, uh, VA, does it uh, have to be like full time? Or no, they'll, they'll do 20, hour, 20 hours a week or 40 hours a week. You can oh. decide what you want. I think the 20 hour per week, I think the hourly rate's a little bit higher. Because like it's, yeah. it's harder to find people that will work. Uh, yeah. More shorter shifts, so you pay them a little more, but it's still so much cheaper than than the local. And you keep your salary expectations, your salary ranges inside the MRE models. If we're heading into a market that's shifting, we keep hearing about a shift. We've been on a run here for two decades. We are going to get smacked hard at some point. Like since 2002, the market's been going up. We had a little thing in 2008, 2009 when the world was melting down. We took this little 4 to 5% bump and then we took it back off again. Like trees don't go to the sky. We're going to get smacked. So when we do get smacked, you're going to be better with a virtual that is cheaper because then all the other agents are having to hack and slash all their admins and they're all discombobulated because they haven't had to do this stuff in years and they're all loose. You're still running lean and fast. It's, it's one of the best things you can do for your business is ship proofing. Yeah. 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 Y
And this number has to change the VI or is it always the same? I have changed the VIs. Since I've figured out that you can just make a movie and train one thing you want, I haven't. I've been two years with the same girls now. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. two years with one girl and like a year with the other one. I haven't had to change anything. Like, because for me, being high D and high C, like high C, I want everything perfect, but high D, I want it now. Um, my patience isn't always the gold standard of what patience looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and so I used to get very, very frustrated. But that's when I figured out that if I just train them like this, if I just show them that, that movie or make that video, I don't have to worry anymore. And that was that was my big like moment because it's so like it's yeah, basic, right? It's so easy. And then you, yeah. and, you, and the best thing is you say to them, and you're making the operations manual. Mm -hmm. And then when you have your weekly meeting with them, show me the manual. Yeah. Show me the steps you typed out. Good, good. And like literally, the next person hires, you hire the next person because that person, you know, they have more kids, they get another job, whatever. You can part ways. Here's your manual. Hey. Um, we need to load a listing, or a listing presentation. Look it up, get it ready. It'll, it'll take them more time than being because they're not used to stuff, right? But literally, if you gave them a day's notice, they could go through everything, get everything done, and, and be ready to roll the next day. Maybe it takes them two hours instead of one hour, or three hours instead of one hour. You're still not doing it. And that's why the other thing is I like the, I like the two EAs. If one's sick or something's gone, I'm covered. So if, if, there's, if there's people coming in and out throughout the day, we can find out, okay, Christina's not starting this morning at 6 because she's sick. Joyce is in at 12. Everything's rolling past that point in time. And I know if I need to get something done between 6 and 12, maybe i got to go do it myself. Or I can talk to my operations guy and manage those two and say, hey, Daniel, 9 o'clock. She's on in today. It's on you. Again, I don't touch it. So, so this may sound incredibly naive. Are you interviewing the person that you're working with? Or are you just calling for a VA company and saying, this is what I want. This is how often I want it assign somebody to my portfolio that's going to be able to work with me. Yeah, they're gonna they're basically you tell them what you want and they'll go find it for you. And of course like you know you have a call with them and yeah. they make sure that But know, it's the same person every day. Yeah. Like it's the same person working on your it's your person. On your profile, yeah. on your portfolio and yeah. your, your VA. Do they work with other agents or your, if, if your they're part time if they're part time, yes, full time okay. no. Yeah. If part time like they they got cameras to feed and everything else like that too, right? So they're going to need to get to their, their 40 hours a week or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, no, it's your same person showing up every single day. Like, mm -hmm. I Skype call with them. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? You know, they go on vacation. I find out where she was going on vacation. I bought her a massage the day she showed up. A massage she showed up. A dinner out for her and her husband one night. Um, no, it was... It, her massage, and then I got them a couple's massage, a babysitter for the room for their kids, and um, and a dinner out together. Because like Joyce, for me, they're very. It's a great culture. Like they serve. Like you know, we bring Filipino nannies over here all the time because they're just they give and they give and they give. And here's here's a woman that was just like torn her heart and soul and just like really trying to learn. You could tell like in her effort. Or I did this. I did this. Hey, I thought you want me to do this too because we did this. Like, yeah, that's exactly right. They, she would pick up on stuff over time, mm -hmm. so I, I paid for this. And those well, are things that she never would have treated herself to, right? She wouldn't mm -hmm. have been able to afford it. Never. But all that cost me like one hundred sixty-seven dollars. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, like, like it was an easy. Service. Like I got the bill and I'm like, bullshit, really? Yeah. Like, like, was a, like I, I was just shocked. I'm like, okay. And then like she was putting in a post on Facebook, oh my God, I work with the most amazing company in the world. They're just full of kindness and love, and they did this and this. I'm like. Hundred seventy-six hundred bucks was a lot of love. That's awesome. Share. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the money; it's about the thought. You know, just doing it. Yeah, but and then again, I was really happy to do it for her because mm -hmm. a like she works hard. Like mm -hmm. she's she's got a young baby um, at home, and that's the thing about. So they're twelve hours off from us, right? So if we're calling them, at, if they're talking to me now at twelve mid twelve my time, it's midnight their time. And so if she had a young child, so like they're. It allowed her to basically still work for Right, home. so they're available during your work hours, mm -hmm. no matter what time it is, where they are. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. Yeah. So, so it's allowed everything to. So, as a morning person, you got them from 6 to 3 ish, 6 to 2 ish? I do. Most people wouldn't do that, but I'm, I'm on the crazier side of the spectrum. Like, I just, when I get up, my mind's going, 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 going. I can't turn it off. I need to, I need to know that certain things are happening. That's just for my own sanity. Most people would just start at nine and run until five, and that's fine. Or start at 
you know, 11 or 12 after the generation and let them go to six or seven nights. So if they need offers prepped or something like that, then then they can um, they can just have them working on those on those things for them. Like there's nothing more I love than they prep an offer for this client for me. Because all your standard clauses that you use on every offer are basically there. If I have to go in and delete a couple of clauses, add swimming pool inspection clause, because this property happens to have a swimming pool like none of the other ones they do in Toronto, fine. But they basically get 9% of the way there. They know how to open up Geo Warehouse, they know how to pull the legal description up, they know how to put it in the offer and again, because I just I showed step by step by step. This is how you do it. But literally I can have an offer ready yeah. 15, 20 minutes. I just make a phone call offer. Yeah, we use standard forms. We use standard clauses. And when I've looked at it, I'll say, yeah, it's good to send it to the client. They drop it into AuthenticSign. And I've schemed AuthenticSign with all the signature and initial blocks. So it'll say JVG, right now it's JVG 2018, because that's the last time I did it. Uh, Schedule B, um, confirmation of co-op. So she basically just takes the confirmation of co-op document, applies the confirmation of co-op skin, and you can assign uh, our clients are the buyers this time. It puts all the signature places in where the buyers go, or signature places where the sellers go. It's all. You can set up that design like that? Yeah. Yep. It's called layouts. Yeah, that's that. So, like, because the last thing I want to do is inspect every little thing that goes out the door. But I know she can just take confirmation of co op, confirmation of co op, apply that layout to that piece of paper. It's good. We're all set. So there's there's lots of little pieces of technology, things like that, where people can do this stuff right. Like, like honestly, I think I could pull any grade six out of any classroom in Toronto and they could go through my checklist. Because it's just following along with the video. Or it's just you know, it's it's really common it's common sense. Do this, this. Okay, they're choosing from drop down menus, they have like um, the hardest thing you have to do with me is log into my accounts. And for that, here's a right this at last pass. Um, password keeper kind of thing? Yeah, and be sure your passwords of people that are sharing out your passwords. They log into their last pass and they might see, you know, your tread login or your your database login. They click log in and it will take them and log them into your database, but they don't get your username and password. So that happened once because I gave you username and password to, to one of my one of my Physical system? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Bad! I just switch it. You have to switch everything. I, you know, and, you know, and try counting for the new password that you like. Yeah. So that you can go on and remember. Yeah, that's good. Remember. Super Realtor 1000? No. You just can't come up with something that, that feels good. You finally do, and you've got to change passwords across mm -hmm. absolutely everything. And then, yeah. So this is the company Meredith the VA. So they're truck trained virtual assistants, city regular, part time. Everyone knows that, so I just got them. Um, info at MyRealTVA.com. I really should have typed that out so it's a little easier to read. Um, yeah, MyRealTVA.com. I think they're nine ninety nine an hour now, not eight ninety nine. I'll just yeah, twenty bucks a week. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're. They're quite good. So I know that they've, they've asked to use a lot of my modeling systems, like a lot of my standard emails up to clients and things like that. So a lot of what I do, all the design of all that stuff, they already have. So if you guys are signing up, so you just follow the same thing. You can't have my assistant. Give me a video and follow, the, follow along. <laughs> you can't have my assistant. But yeah, like all the, uh, all the, uh, all the procedures, like all of those, those emails and things like that are they're done. They're so, yeah. they only give it to you if you're accountable. Nice. Uh, Keeping it. I think I keep it a little bit. Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> nice. So, okay. yeah. anyone any questions about that? I have a super quick question about um, you, you were talking about showing agents, and then you're talking about two buyers agents on your team. Yep. Um, you know, how did you source these people out, and how do you pay them? Uh, they take money. Usually. No, but I mean like percentage. Is it part like, and if they bring their own people in, like right. you know, so the breakdown. We've had a few different iterations, um, and we started with. Um, I started with like a sixty-five thirty-five split, mm -hmm. and it was a really complex model. I think I used actually. I think it was based on Ben Kinney's model. Like if I produced the lead, yeah. and you closed it, it was this. 
on a, on a buy, on a sell, um, and then... And then if you produce the lead, it switches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 like, someone, like, the VA would send me, like, is this trade record approved? Because they put up the split sign, I go, I don't know! Because I don't know how I got that lead. I, like, I have to go back and source it all out, and it became a giant pain in the butt. My operations guy was like, we just need to simplify this. I'm like, probably right. But I don't want it to go too far one way or too far the other. So where I'm at right now mm -hmm. is I'm back at the traditional 50-50. Mm -hmm. I will be pushing it to a 60-40. Telling them I'm pushing it to a 60-40, but I'm only getting it there once I've built their business up big enough where you can say, now look, I'm taking away 10, but I added 90. So we're not we're not gonna have a conversation of this is unfair because I'm helping you make more money than you would have made on your own. Mm -hmm. By far. The one thing before I take my split, I gotta give. I gotta give before I get. Mm -hmm. Um, so with my showing assistance, it's a little bit different. If you're going out, it's like 50 bucks a showing mm -hmm. uh, for the first 10. Sorry, I read the doctor. And then after that, it's 25% uh, for showing assistance. Yeah. So for up to 10 showings, it's 50 dollars. Okay, got for, it. For showing. For showing. And um, who are you? Are these agents? Well, they obviously have to yeah. be licensed. Yeah. Okay, and they're just maybe new people that are trying to get. Um, you are younger and wanted some mentoring and coaching, okay. and so that's. So that's also part of it. You're sort of helping them along. Yeah, and so right now I'm in like I'm getting out of here. I'm going to Burlington to sit with the developer. I'm working out of that office one uh, Monday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday afternoon. I'm in there basically all day Tuesday, all day Thursday. I'm saving some for this morning because I'm here, um, but. I have to make sure that I can sit with my people and say, Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning, I'm yours. Right. And it's really going to coach you. Right. right. I can be there all the time. I'll be reaching with my phone. But the only value I have is I'm helping you do business. Mm -hmm. So um, but that's that's the only reason someone joins you and, or and stays with you is you have to help them do more business than they do on their own. You have, to, you have to provide them with something. You know, I don't like lead generating. I got leads, but if you don't like lead generating, I don't like it because I don't want you. Um, it's, you've got to be able to add value. The value I want to add is, is growing them and giving them opportunity. Um, so I've, I've had people that I've been in business with and they said, I've got this great idea for a company. And I'll say, tell me about it. I'll say, that is a great idea. Okay, so we're going to do that together and here's what we're going to do. So I've been 50 50 partner on, on deals with, with people that have worked with me. And um, again, it's just it's giving an opportunity. There and, and you've got a lot more real estate knowledge and ways to navigate tricky situations in your head than sometimes you realize. If someone calls you and goes, "What do I do? What do you, what do you just do this?" Like, like you know it because you just—it's like breathing for you now. You're well scripted in that, in whatever that certain situation is. Um, they're not because because they're newer. So um, for me, it's it's I really try and, and add value to these guys' lives. It's the only it's the only reason it's the only way it'll work. When is the right time, do you think, to get a buyer's assistant? When you're stretched, so what do you think? Like, it's like, yeah, or it's like, I'm not having fun because I don't have weekends. Right. And, yeah. it, like, it, it, and that just depends, and that's a lifestyle mm -hmm. choice, right? Totally. Like, me, before I had, let's say, a child or if I didn't have anyone in my life, 800 hour weeks, I don't right. care. It's like, what else am I going to do? Right. You have a family, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, you go tell my daughter, I'm sorry, daddy can't see you. He's going to go on showings. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's all, the all, the all the problem. All the problem. Teenager. Yeah. Um, so it's it really is your own personal balance. Yeah. Okay. Whether it's level one or level seven, it's all you. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Who, is, uh, who are your um, your buyer agents? Who are they lead gen? Are they just cold uh, cold calling neighborhoods? Uh, so who do you have them? Right. Rather? So over the years, I have a database of about twelve thousand now. Okay. Um, so what happens is my database is set. So I've got the contacts that are just mine. The high defense of super high net worth or developers or something, those are all pulled out. Everyone else sits in something that we call the pond. And the pond is simply just like, you know, full like 10,000 leads. Okay. And the way the database is set up is if someone in the pond has a contact in the last three months, three or four, is it three? Um, they, they're on a, a call list. But so these guys will just go in and go into the pond and they go fishing. So they, they put their lines in the pond. <laughs> and my task to them is you need to find 50 of the most ready to transact people that you can find out of this pond. You only get 50. So day one, they make 50 phone calls. They've got 50 people outside of the pond. Day two, they're going to find three more really hot people in here. Three come out, three go back in. 
they ditch three. So they're constantly top grading their leads. Right. Yeah. See, I, I want you only with people that are ready to go and go now. Mm -hmm. um, and the one guy on my team has got a really strong handle on this. Like he's, mm -hmm. it's his first year in the business. He's going about a deal every two weeks right now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he's just learning, which is great. Right. Um, and so those keep clipping, that, that's good. And then these start piling up, it's just gonna get better and better and better. Um, but I just, I want them dealing with the hottest. And very soon, he'll be at the point where I'm like, all right, dude, it's time for a VA. Right. So we need to leverage. Mm -hmm. Those deals are yours. The referrals that come off of those deals, are they his or are they split? It's all mine. If, if you are working with me and I'm coaching you and I'm growing you, anything that comes into our database while you're with us is property of the team person group wants the company. You could, call it, you could call it the real estate group, doesn't even have to put my name on it, it just happens to. Um, but it's like if you work for PepsiCo and you develop this piece of tech for PepsiCo, when you leave it's not yours, yeah. it's PepsiCo's. This is no different. It's all the same thing. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's like Smith Real Estate, but I happen to own it. It's just my name is there, which just kind of makes it, it sound more ego-ish, but it, it, if you look at it just from a pure business point of view, it doesn't matter what that business is called, you work for that business, yeah. He's generated, but he belongs to the business. Mm -hmm. So if he doesn't open house on one of your listings, it's your lead. 100%, he's working for it. If he doesn't open house, you don't have a listing or you don't have something going on that weekend and he picks up an open house somewhere else? Yep. That's his or that's yours? It's, it's all the business. You work it's all PepsiCo, it belongs to PepsiCo. Okay. But here's the thing. If I've got someone that's looked like, I flipped off three leads this morning, those came into me. But if I give it to him and he does a deal, he gets half the commission on that. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's my job to keep him fed. It's his job to lead generate and hit you know, his minimum 100 contacts a week. If he wasn't hitting 100 contacts a week, he'd be gone. Mm -hmm. So it's like, he's lead gen. I'm feeding him stuff all day long. I'm giving him access to pre-construction development so he can take into this database of 10,000 people before any other agent in the world has access to it. No, I'm you know, but it comes down to value. It doesn't feel like a big deal giving up half. If, if you look down your, your transaction list at the end of the year, and you got 15 deals from stuff you generated yourself and 45 that came from me going, here you go, here you go, here you go. Half doesn't seem like a big deal. If you look down that same list of 60 deals and 57 of them came from you and three came from me, I better have brought something else from really tangible to the table because I'm not offering you value, at least not in a monetary sense. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I could be in that you're only able to do those deals because my admins in the background are doing all the BS for you, so you can only just worry about lead gen, lead follow up. Like, if I've got that running, that's worth it. If you look at the MREA, this is a funny thing. This is where people, they get on a team, they get the nose of soda joint, but, they, but they're missing something. MREA, what's what's your actual operating profit when you hit like a six or seven level business with the MREA? It's like 32%, right? So if you were to go and do a business that big, you think, I get to keep 100%. Bullshit, you get to keep 32%. You're gonna make less as a percentage, growing a team, then you will doing deals, um, being a part of a team. Right. You get 50, so net you're, you're up 18%, so, because you're not paying the salaries of the employees, you're not paying the office space, you're not paying all the stuff that goes into it, the photography, you know, like, those costs absolutely stack up. But it's, but again, the person leading that team, it's their responsibility to make sure the people on the team getting the value because if they're not, they will not stay. Like we've all known teams that yeah. also they're blowing up so fast, like oh my god, what's that agent doing? They must have it all figured out. They're up to 15 team members, and then the whole house of cards comes down. And what happened with an agent at a prominent agent out of the urban office downtown and all that one here. They had a hell of a team. They looked like they were like they actually were probably top two in the country. Top three in the country. And the whole house of cards collapsed, everyone left. Everyone left. What team was that? Doesn't matter. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, they got right now. But again, it's people on the team. And I'll tell you what happened with, with that. Buyer's agent, lead agent, okay? We're double ending a deal. And the seller says, I want a discount. Not a problem. We'll discount the buyer commission. So rather than us splitting the discount evenly or rather than me taking it on the sell side, I come to you and I say, hey, you know, it's 2.5%, 1.25 each. They're giving us one point, so it's a half point each. So he had his buyer's agent take the hit, mm. and he kept it all on the sales side. And that's just not mm. great business. Um, do you guys want to ask my lead? 
Yeah, she, so as she, so oh, she started working for, she, went, she was working for? I worked with her. Started saving NASA. 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 I worked with NASA. I actually yeah. had to deal with her with your group. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. It was like two years ago. Yeah, so she came. She's nice. Yeah, no, she's, she's super, super fun. Yeah. Um, she, she made 40 grand the year before working for Spring Realty. She came over to, to my side. And she made 550 that year, so she took a, a nice ramp up. Um, but one of her first days on the job, I said, you know, well, there's this buyer lead that came in. Here you go. I, like, I already talked to him, like, he wants to buy. And she was my buyer lead, and I'm like, I'm handing her $1.6 million sale on a platter right here. And it was. She's like, oh my god, just give it to me. I'm like, yeah, I have to. Like, that's, you're here to do that job. If I start only doing stuff that's good for me, you don't mm -hmm. stay. Right. It just doesn't work that way. So there, there's times where like, it, didn't, it didn't taste good. But I knew at the time it was the right way. And that was also the deal I had with her. I had 50-50 split. I had to put into the contract up front 10 showings and then, and then that. Um, so I had no business to try and discount it. And that's, that's how that 10 showings before that came to be was, was on that deal. But I, I honored that deal. <laughs> $26,000 mistake. Yeah, no, it's a good, good, no, You want to talk mistakes. There's a lot of money out there in the mistakes. That's how you learn, unfortunately. It's just it's an education piece. But it's, it's one of those things you just you have to do the right thing every step of the way. So when someone does that to one of their buyer's agents, mm -hmm. they're going to talk to all the other people. Not, I don't think that's how confidence in between the two. Yeah. Talk, no, right? and then so, and then it comes to like like culture and then yeah. 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 It, it, it absolutely spreads rapidly throughout mm -hmm. the entire yeah. entire organization. It's just getting greedy anyway. I, that's what I think. You have to yeah. be. You have to get back to game. Make three million sure. dollars a year and you can't let it go. Like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just crazy. so. I think you just have to, to keep all those things in perspective. And it's yeah. like they're not always fun decisions. It's not like bad decisions suck because like. The right thing to do it, get over yourself and go. Yeah. Well, sure. Good about the position. All good. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, you're going to me. I can't do that. <laughs> no, I can't. That's <laughs> limitation. Oh, that's limitation time. Yeah. Well, I am waiting for this. Yeah, great. See you then. Yeah. Good to see you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.